Okay, so in this quick video, I wanted to show you how to play with Presto and query data from Azure Blob Storage and Azure Data Lake Store. If you want to learn a little bit more about Presto in general and how to install it on HD Inside, there's a great uh, article by a colleague who describes the architecture of Presto, what it is, how it queries data, and how to install it very easily on an HD Inside cluster. But what if you want to play with Presto inside of a Docker container in your own machine and you don't want to run a HDI cluster, but you still want to query Azure Data Lake Store and uh, or blobs. I created a quick example in this repository. Basically, what we will do is we will try this out and see how it works in uh, in real time. But the, the repo consists of a set Two, two Docker containers, one with Hive, and we need Hive because we need the meta store to store the metadata about our tables that we will be querying, and we need the Presto itself. And it's all going to be one non-distributed installation, so it's not for production use, it's just as an example or a proof of concept of accessing those two sources from Presto. This could be uh, used as more, more, more of a documentation to do your own installation on multiple sources. So I opened uh, Visual Studio Code uh, of the same repo to show you the examples. So I have my private configs in the same file as this. I specify the storage account name, storage account key. For ADLS access, Azure Data Lake Store, I need uh, the ADLS account name, tenant ID, client ID, and secret. I'm not going to cover how to get those, but those are uh, the credentials that you need for each of these storage accounts. Instead of putting them here, I'm putting them in the environment config private, which is not checked in into the repo. Um, and then let's just go over very quickly of what uh, what is happening here with Hive. So with, uh, with the Hive, I create it from a Docker uh, container. Uh, as a base, I install Hive 1.2 on it. Basically, that downloads Hive. And the most important part is the tricky part is because Hive comes without some of the components of some of the jars, classes that are necessary for accessing Azure Data Lake Store and, and WASB properly. I am downloading them directly and putting them in a lib directory, right? In the lib directory. And these versions is the tricky part, right? Some of these versions. Uh, what I'm putting here, you can see some alpha versions, etc. That is um, what seems to work uh, for me, but requires more more testing, obviously. But if you try different versions, you will probably not get a successful installation. You, I changed the Java from 1.7 to 1.8 because, um, let's say, this jar is compiled with 1.8 JDK, so it will not work otherwise. I expose the Hive Metastore port and then I start the meta store, basically first start the Hadoop itself. And then very interestingly is you just to run to start the meta store service. And all of these settings is are important, right? So you can see I'm fitting in on the command line, the storage account name that was passed as a environment variable, the key, the Azure Data Lake implementation file system name, all of those are documented in the Hadoop documentation for Azure Data Lake Store and WASB. But I'm instead of putting them in config file, I'm passing them right here. And you can see that's the client ID, environment variable, client secret, my tenant ID. And that's what will give this Hive Meta Store information about how to actually query my storage accounts and my data lake. So that will create my Hive. For Presto, I have a Docker file. And basically what I do is uh, download Presto from Teradata, who are the committer on, on the Presto project. Um, it, it can be another Presto as well, but I'm using this one to prove that this one works. Um, download the CLI of Presto, put in, uh, create the directories, move the data into the directories. Again, download the required jars. And again, this is the crucial part because you can see I'm downloading some very specific versions here without some of these jars, things will not work uh, because Presto, I'm using pre-compiled Presto, I'm re not rebuilding it, and I'm just adding the dependencies that are necessary to be able to talk uh, to the data lake and WASB, and I'm putting them in Presto's directory for plugins, Hive, Hadoop, that's where all the other libraries are. 
then I'm copying files in. So you can see in the files, I have my configuration file with similar settings that were passed in command line for Hive. I cannot pass them easily, or I didn't try passing them for Presto. Rather, I'm creating a config file, and then I'm just going to do a replace of these dynamically when the container runs. I'll show you. And basically here is I'm creating the uh, Presto uh, relevant files. You can read more about it on the Presto website. The crucial parts here are the Hive configuration. You can see I'm pointing it to the meta uh, store URI of my Hive. That is the Hive container. So because I'm going to run it using Docker Compose, this will resolve to the other container. And that's the port I exposed there. And then I'm pointing it to this config file right here. And again, this is all combining into one single node. So all of these configs are more for, for testing purposes, but they do give you a starting point in a demo. This just describes what you can, uh, where you can see Hive properties file, the config file, which port I'm exposing and how to start press. And then we basically doing this, what I mentioned, the replacements in the file so that the right values are there. And then I'm starting Presto. Okay. And then finally in the root, I have a Docker uh, compose YAML file that basically builds up um, the Hive and the Presto. Presto depends on Hive. So this one will start a little faster. Um, and then basically we are going to try running this right now and stepping through some of the steps. So let's say, uh, let's open the Git repo where I'm describing the steps. So as a first step, you clone it and then you, you start this. And you can see it's basically refreshing my images. They're pretty fast. I mean, for you first time, it will take longer because you will not have some of the base images there. But for me, it's faster. So it's starting the Hive. And you can see the logs in this uh, terminal window are kind of combined from both of them. Uh, let's go back to the instructions. And you can see it says once it's running, you know, let's open a different terminal window. And this in this terminal window, let's see what we have. So we are running right now two containers and Presto and Hive containers. So let's follow the instructions and do what it says. So it's still starting my Presto, but the instructions say, hey, let's create a couple tables pointing to our Azure storage. So I'm going to create, a, open a session, a bash a TTY on my Hive. So this is where my Hive is. You can see the processes that are running there and the meta store is starting or started and basically what we are going to do now is let's create a couple tables for for this so what we are going to do first is we're going to start a hive session So this basically says, hey, start Hive and point it to this remote meta store that's running on the same machine. Okay, so if Hive started, we should get no errors. If Hive didn't yet start, we may get some errors. Okay, show tables. So we're gonna see that we are not, we do not have any tables yet. Now let's create a couple tables that we will actually use. And those tables will be backed by Azure Blob Storage. So let me show you what that looks like. So you see, I'm creating a table, WASB table one, with an ID and a name column, format delimited fields by comma, store this text file in a location. So what is this location? This is a container name. This is my storage account name, which I provided in the environment config file. And this is the name of the table. I may already have this in, the, in there, so it may give me an error that already exists and we'll drop it and recreate it. Let's see. So what is happening right now is if you watch Hive, I, because I have it running in debug mode, you can see it's communicating with the Azure file system 
and it's actually doing these things. Okay, it's basically telling me that the table is there. You see, that table is created. Now let's create an ADLS back table. So table backed by Azure Data Lake Store. So very similar, except now we're using the ADL scheme instead of the WASB scheme. And the reason it works again is because of all of those jars we included in the proper configurations we passed. But this will create a table in the Azure Data Lake account. So it's taking a few seconds. And as you can see, it's authenticating against the Active Directory, fetching a token, and using all of these credentials that I passed to it securely. And now we have the tables. So now that we have both tables, we'll open a session for Presto itself. So in one window, we are connected to the Hive um, container that's running. And now we're going to connect to the Presto container that is running, and we're going to try running some Presto commands using this Hive. We just need a Hive to satisfy Presto's needs for a Hive Metastore. So look what we're going to do now. Basically opening a bash, and it's telling us we're in a Presto. And then we're going to run Presto and point it to itself, Presto client pointing it to itself because the server is already running on port 8080. That's what the Presto is, uh, was configured. As you can see, I said I configured it on 8080. And now we're going to open the shell, command line CLI for Presto. Okay. So now that we have it, let's see what catalogs we have. That's a concept in Presto, uh, defining different uh, connections that we defined. And one of them is Hive. And that's the one we care about, right? So there is a Hive. Now let's see show schemas from Hive. So this should, would show us the schemas from Hive. And as you would imagine, we have the default schema, which was the schema where we created the tables. Now let's say show tables from Hive default. And we should see the two tables that we defined, right? That's great. Now let's see if we can select something from the WASB table one limit 10, writing a SQL against the table stored in Azure Blob Storage from Presto. Hive and Hadoop are not really involved in, uh, in processing this data. It is just served for the metadata describing this table and where it is located. We can, how can we confirm it is by looking at the logs here and seeing that Hive will not be making the queries. It will be Presto doing it directly. The error message is very common in this case is because I forgot to specify the catalog name, Hive, and the schema name. Because in Presto, you can have connections to completely different sources at the same time. And you can see the data that is in that table stored in storage. Let's see how many records there. I think I did. Uh, an experiment before where I was inserting onto itself in the table, so it probably has a few million records there. So we're counting them all right now. Again, the speed here is very slow because it's running on, the, on a container and one node instead of multiple uh, Presto, but it's the communication is the point. So it says six million records. And let's also do a select now from the uh, ADL table, this table, and see how many how much data we have there so select count from hive default adl table one that's the azure data lake table and we have 148 records there and the inserts would be as simple as basically just as you would expect because and this would actually write into the tables stored in azure data lake store and then WASB. And the and the only reason we needed Hive Metastore, I will show you at the very end, is because we need the metadata. So, so take a look, okay? So let's now do an experiment just to show why we needed that Hive container running if it's not being used. Docker PS, let's kill the Hive Metastore container. So we killed 
uh, have metastore container. Presto now does not really have a way to communicate necessarily with the new, to, to find out the metadata of the new tables. But because it cached it, we may still be able to query the previous table that it already knew about, and it looks like we can. Uh, but if we were to try to do show tables from Hive default, this is the cached information, but without that metadata running in the beginning, these tables would not be visible. And that's why this consists of Presto and Hive as an example. Thank you very much for watching.